Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here. And in today's video, we're gonna be comparing a fully loaded 2021 Ram Rebel to a 2021 Ram 2500 Power Wagon 75th Anniversary Edition. But first and foremost, a huge shout out. Thank you to the Larry Miller Dodge Ram here in Sandy for giving me some time with both the trucks. Check out the inventory link below. Let's get into it. Pop under the hoods of both the trucks. Starting over here with this Rebel, we have a naturally aspirated 5.7 liter Hemi V8 that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy 17 around town and then 22 on the highway because this does have the e-torque system. So power outputs are still 395 horsepower and then 410 pound feet of torque. Coming over to the Power Wagon, we have a Natchi aspirated 6.4 liter Hemi V8 that also goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Well, it doesn't have a fuel economy rating from the uh, EPA, so we can't really go over that, but power outputs are a little bit more, 410 horsepower and then 429 pound feet of torque. So a little bit more power, a little bit more torque, bigger engine and smaller engine, but I mean, let's just be honest, this is gonna get better fuel economy because it's a smaller truck with a smaller engine. So yeah, better fuel economy, but more power and that's everything front of the hoods. Now let's go over the front ends of both the trucks. Again, starting over here with the Rebel. This one does have the Rebel decal package, which I think looks really neat. And then coming down below, we've got the full LED reflector lights with the LED accent lights, fog lights down below with the whole like Rebel front bumper. We've got the skid plate at the bottom with the tow hooks. You do get parking sensors in this bumper. And then you got the Ram moustache is what I like to call it. Really cool venting there on the hood that makes it look really aggressive and then also in the center portion. And then coming over here to the power wagon, notice you've got the cab lights there at the top, uh, nothing in the hood. And then by the way, this is finished in anvil. It's a special color for the 75th anniversary. Got the 2500 badge right there. And then coming down below, you've got full LED lights. I love how sharp the LED line there is at the bottom. Fog lights down below with all the parking sensors. You do have the synthetic cable as part of the winch system here with the power wagon. And then again, you've got the Ram logo with the Ram moustache that goes across. And then you do get a special grill as part of the 75th anniversary, which looks really good. And then also just notice the height difference between the trucks. It's kind of hard to tell on camera, but in person, the power wagon is definitely quite a bit taller. Let's go over the tire and wheel setup of each of the trucks. So on the Rebel, we've got 18 inch wheels. On the Power Wagon, we've got 17 inch wheels. On the Rebel, we've got two 75 millimeter tires, whereas on the Power Wagon, they're 285 millimeter, but they're both still 33s. Now coming over here to the Rebel, here's kind of like the uh, tread pattern there with the tires themselves. And then I think the design on the wheels looks really good. I do prefer the black Rebel group that kind of makes everything all blacked out on the wheels and then the skid plate. And then you guys can probably see just a little bit, you do get the off-road shocks also as part of the Rebel package. And then notice the fender flare here on the side. Now coming over to the Power Wagon, Again, notice kind of like the tread pattern and look at the gap there. I mean, this truck's so high off the uh, ground, tons of clearance with the suspension. And then you've got these shocks as well. And then this one does have the beadlock capable wheels. That's part of the 75th anniversary package. I definitely love the look of these wheels, especially on this truck with the anvil color. And then notice you've got the fender flare right there. 6.4 Hemi badge, power wagon logo. And then look at that, you got a little step system right there. Um, also just basically for protection on the side of the truck. But yeah, that's pretty much everything for the side. Notice they do have trailer mirrors and this really shows you the height difference. Like look at where the mirrors are in terms of like their height location. And let's head to the back. Let's go over the beds of both of the trucks. First off, let's go over the payload. So 1,252 pounds for the Power Wagon, 1,302 pounds for the Rebel. Yes, the half ton has a higher payload capacity. Anyways, continuing with the rest of the Power Wagon, full spray in bed liner, you've got the LED bed lights. And then notice that you've got a power outlet here in the back, six and a half foot bed with the Power Wagon since it's a 2,500 and that's the shorter size bed for the 2,500. Coming over to the Rebel, no bed liner, but you can get it as an option from the factory. Still get the LED bed lights, but no power outlet. And this is a five foot seven bed, so shorter in length compared to the power wagon. And if you wanna get a six four bed on a Rebel, you have to get it with the quad cab, which is the uh, shorter cab. And I'm not sure about the tailgate on this. Like I pressed the button as you guys saw, and it just like slammed down, but Rebel, power wagon. Let's finish things up in the rear of both of the trucks. So coming over here to the power wagon, full LED lights. You've got the blacked out portion there in the center. You've got the Ram logo and the power wagon logo with the exhaust tip at the bottom, blacked out bumpers with the parking sensors. Towing capacity is about 10,000 pounds with the power wagon. Coming over here to the Rebel, 
Again, you've got pretty similar with the uh, Ram logo on the back, same tail lights. Bumper is actually pretty similar to all the parking sensors. Towing capacity, however, is about 11,000 pounds, so it has a higher towing capacity as well as a higher payload. Blacked out exhaust tips, which I think look really nice on the Rebel. But yeah, that's the back of the Rebel, and that's the back of the Power Wagon. Now, before we pop into the back seats, I do want to show you guys the shocks here in the rear. So with the Rebel, we can't see anything because it's got the wheel well liner. But coming over to the Power Wagon, we can see the shocks. I mean, that's a benefit because like you can flex your shocks here with the Power Wagon, whereas you can't with the Rebel. But in all seriousness, let's actually head to the back. So this has the Rebel 12 package. You've got all the leather here on the door panel, which is really nice. And then full leather seats. You've got the perfect leather here in the center. You've got my shadow because of the sun. Little ice bucket just down below. And then this one doesn't have the reclining seats or anything like that. You do get storage underneath the seat though, which is nice. And well, the floor mats kind of, okay, now they're not in the way. Anyways, you've got the cup holders right here. You've got the USBs down below. And then this one does have heated seats in the back and a power outlet. Now I've had a bunch of people request if I sit in the back of the Rebel directly with the power wagon so you guys can see the space difference. So again, 511, headroom's really good. And then you guys can see tons of leg room here in the Rebel. And that being said, let's pop over into the power wagon. So, see ya. Now, coming to the power wagon, this door panel is so beautiful. So, you get the same leather you get in a limited as what they've put in the 75th anniversary. So, it's really nice, high quality stuff, beautiful stitching. Harman Kardon sound system. So, you've got the giant speakers. And then you've got these beautiful brown leather seats, which, again, just look at that. So perfect. Perfect leather here all down the center. And you got the nice piping black on the bottom. And then you got the older school ice buckets. Still get the under seat storage, all that fun jazz. But let's actually pop into the power wagon, which step in height is ooh, a lot higher compared to the Rebel. Um, now, you guys will notice that headroom is actually a little bit less here in the power wagon. And then leg room is also a little bit less. So the Rebel has a more spacious back seat. And then you still get this same like whole center stack. It's it's identical to what's in the Rebel. And then got little cup holders to pull down. But that's the back of the power wagon. So ooh, we made it. Now let's go over the door panel here in the front of the Rebel. So you've got all the leather here on this portion of the door panel. Memory seats, and then you've got all of your window controls, your mirror adjustments. This does have the trailer mirrors, no blind spot monitoring, and they are not power folding. And then here are the seats in the front of the Rebel. So again, full leather here. You've got the nice Rebel logo on the side with the perforated leather there in the center. Got your adjustments on the side of the seat. Pedal layout just down below. You've got your adjustments for the pedals, your parking brake, light controls just up above with the fog light and the cargo light. The steering wheel is manually adjustable. And there's one more look before we pop in. Now let's go over the interior here of the Rebel. So you've got soft touch leather at the top and the bottom of the steering wheel with the perforated leather on the side. You've got your cruise control and your gear limiter. Got all the controls for the center stack with your voice command phone controls. Radio controls are on the back. And then you have the little stock there for the turn signal slash windshield wipers. That's all for the steering wheel. Now popping here into the center screen, notice you've got the analog gauges on either side with the screen there, which shows you vehicle information. The most important thing is this little off-road status when you do take the Rebel on the off-road. And I mean, that's not accurate fuel economy because the truck only has 25 miles on it. Uh, but yeah, that's everything for the center area. And it says Rebel there at the top. Got the nice black trim here at the 12 volt. And then this one, since it's a Rebel 12 package, you get the 12 inch display. Analog climate controls, analog radio controls on either side, your parking sensors, your tow haul mode, stability control, and then the trailer brake controls. And then if we pop it into reverse, this one has the traditional backup camera, no 360 camera, anything like that. Got the zoom in function with it. Heated seats, heated steering wheel. You cannot get ventilated seats in the Rebel still. And then as for the rest of the screen, really good response time on all of the buttons. You do get the off-road pages as an option now with the Rebels, but that's that whole section. Got the cool little dial shifter for the eight speed automatic. You got your two wheel drive, your four wheel low, your four wheel high, and then your true neutral. And that's the auto stop start because this does have e-torque, so you get auto stop start. Your hill descent control, and then this does have an axle lock, which is another nice little part of, or piece of off-road tech. Here's the center console, which pretty uh, normal. Got the measuring tables, slides backwards and forwards. You get a wireless phone charger with a power outlet down below, a bunch of USBs. It says Rebel on the glove box, and then, Pretty normal storage space. You've got the soft touch there at the top of the dash. And then finishing things here at the very top of the Rebel. This one has the full panoramic sunroof. You've got a power sliding window on top of that. The controls to center for right here. And then this one just has the traditional mirror. And then universal garage door openers. Let's head over to the power wagon. 
Now that we're in the power wagon, I just want to mention the key features that are different. So you guys can see the gauge cluster here it says power wagon there at the uh, top. Everything else is pretty much the same. Everything with the steering wheel is the same. That's why I kind of just grazed over it. Uh, the dash, huge difference. So you get the really nice leather that you get in the limited here in the 75th anniversary. So it definitely feels and looks a whole lot more premium. And then you can see this kind of the material use around this, just a little bit nicer than what you get in the Rebel. 12 inch display is exactly the same, but there are some differences with this truck. So this one does have the 360 camera system with it. So when you pop it in reverse, you've got all these different viewpoints that you can go through. And then it even has the cargo camera as well as the side cameras. The next thing with the camera system, so if we press the control tab, is when you are on the off-road, you do have a forward camera with the little tire tracks, which is definitely nice. Ventilated seats, so the Rebel just has heated seats, this has heated and ventilated, so that's another nice little option. And then this whole area is similar enough, right? You've got the same dial shifter and you've got the driveline sucks, but notice you've got the sway bar disconnect here with the power wagon. And then the power wagon has a little bit more of the lockers. So the Rebel just has a rear locker, whereas this has front and rear. So yeah, you've got a sway bar disconnect on this that the Rebel doesn't have. And then you have front lockers, which the Rebel doesn't have as well. And then the center console is a little bit different, nicer leather. You've got the power wagon emblem right there. And then you've got suede on the inside versus the rubber in the Rebel. Uh, everything else is the same except no wireless phone charging, which I think that's interesting that it doesn't have it. And then coming over to the glove box, this is pretty much the same other than the fact that notice that it says power wagon there on the top and then it gives you your production number. This one's number 766. And yeah, so that's all the same and pretty well different. I mean, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, we've got the sunroof here. Notice that it's not a panoramic like in the Rebel. And then we've got the power sliding window, uh, tailgate dropped and all that kind of stuff. And then same mirror. <laughs> Now let's get into pricing with both of the trucks. So the Power Wagon stickers for about $70,000 and then this Rebel stickers for about $62,000, roughly an $8,000 price difference. Now per usual, we do have to pick a winner for today's video. So let's go over the pros and cons quickly. So first off, a pro with the Rebel is actually the size. You're gonna be able to get into more places with the Rebel on the off-road just because of the smaller length of the truck and the width as well. The Power Wagon's a little bit wider than the Rebel. So yes, the Si the width isn't a huge issue, but it's mostly the length. Uh, so the size is a plus, better fuel economy, little bit lower price as well. So those are all pluses. The Power Wagon, however, has better ground clearance, a little bit more off-road capability because of the fact that it has the winch from the factory and the shocks on this truck are absolutely crazy. And then also the biggest thing though, front and rear lockers, whereas this only has rear lockers. And then you also have the sway bar disconnect. And the Power Wagon definitely has a nicer interior. So again, pros and cons to both. However, I have picked a winner and the winner for today's video is the Power Wagon in this 75th anniversary package. Now, if this was a regular Power Wagon, it would be a lot closer, but the 75th anniversary is such a good value. It gives you such a nice interior. And so it definitely brings up the truck and it doesn't necessarily break the bank because of all the stuff that you get. So yes, the Power Wagon wins today's video, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. That is gonna sum things up for today's video, comparing the Rebel to the Power Wagon. And again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry H. Miller Dodge Ram here in Sandy. Totally almost a trip to myself. <laughs> <laughs> for giving me some time with both of the trucks. Check out the inventory in the link below. I'll see all of you in the next video.